again in a little bit later on. Um, but I wanted to first thank you for attending tonight. Um, I know that we all spend most of our day on Zoom, so we are very appreciative of the fact that you are taking some time out of your afternoon to learn a little bit more about Providence College and specifically to learn more about what it's like to be a student uh, that's within the fine arts on campus. Um, so you'll be hearing from a couple different people today. Um, so starting off with myself, my name is Matt Morano. I'm an, uh, excuse me, I'm an Associate Dean of Admission here at Providence College. I'm also a Providence College alumni. So in the interest of full disclosure, I'm kind of biased when it comes to PC. I think it's a pretty great place to spend four years as a student and to learn and grow as a person. Uh, and I was also a music minor. I was an English major and a music minor. So I'm pretty familiar with um, some of the professors that you will see a little bit later on. Um, and I can certainly talk a lot about my experience as a music minor here on campus and my involvement with the fine arts. But you'll be actually hearing from a couple of current students. They'll be joining us a little bit later on. So to kind of like tell you about the agenda and what to expect for today. Um, so in a couple minutes, we have um, one of our professors, Dr. Dana Dillon, uh, that's going to join us to talk about kind of a, the liberal arts curriculum and the importance of a class like development of Western civilization. So even though you might be looking at majoring in uh, the fine arts at, uh, at Providence, there's still a, a liberal arts component that every student is going to have to take. And development of Western civilization is a big piece of that. And that's why Dana will kind of help give a general overview of that program. Once Dana wraps up, we'll have professors from the theater, art, and music uh, majors on campus. So they will introduce themselves and give you kind of a short overview of their program and what it's like to be a student within that major. Uh, and then we have um, Dr. Jennifer Van Reet, who is the director of our Center for Engaged Learning. And that is kind of a place with, that highlights students' involvement in things like um, internships and research experiences. And I know that fine arts isn't always, or those are not always programs that people typically associate with things like undergraduate research, but we have had students that do, that conduct research from those majors uh, on our campus. So Jennifer will be able to highlight um, some, some uh, aspects of her center and her part on campus. And then we'll follow up and conclude the evening with a student panel. So there are four students that will be joining us a little bit later on so we can talk about their experiences um, and they will tell you a little bit more about what current life is like at Providence College. So at any point throughout this, if you have any general questions, we are in a webinar format. So you can submit questions through the, the Q&A portion at the bottom. Um, and I will kind of get to them throughout the program. So all in all, we should be wrapping up um, right around between 4.30 or 4.45. That is typically um, where we're going to, to wrap up with um, the, the day's festivities. So that's kind of the general overview. Um, I'm going to allow Dana Dillon, Dr. Dillon, to come on and share a little bit more about uh, the Development of Western Civ program um, and just the liberal arts curriculum at Providence College. So Dana, if you're ready, you can take it away. You can you can put your camera on and and we can go from there. Or if you don't want to put your camera on, it's up to you. I'm not going to. You know um, what? I, mean, I will admit this picture is older. To see how much older I am. But uh, it says I can't start my video until you enable that. But I'm happy to do that. If oh, all right. Sorry that. about that. I can, I can I can make that happen. Uh, well, let's see. While, while you work on that, I'll go ahead and start to say I'm Dana Dillon. I'm in my 15th year here on the faculty at Providence College. I'm a theologian by training. Uh, I did my, uh, let's see, I have the power now. There I am. There you go. All right. Um, so I have my uh, PhD from Duke University, and I have my um, undergraduate and master's degree from the University of Notre Dame. Those are both in theology. So that's my training. I have a joint appointment here at Providence College where I have um, half of my teaching is in the theology department and half of my teaching is in the Department of Public and Community Service Studies. Believe it or not, that is also something you can major in at uh, Providence College. 
Um, so I'm also serving right now as the director of the Development of Western Civilization Program. And so I want to tell you a little bit about that and about the liberal arts uh, core here at Providence College. Um, when I was an undergrad theology major, people asked me, what are you going to do with that? And uh, the answer that I and the other uh, theologians uh, in my department were, would, would talk about is anything that requires me to read, write, or think. And since I've been here at Providence College and been teaching in, in the DWC program, I think about that quite a bit. I think that uh, this foundational program in a lot of ways really develops our students, whether they're fine arts majors, business majors, chemistry majors, or anything else at all, to really develop those, those skills in reading, writing, critical thinking. And I think that that's, that's a really important part of this. So let me just tell you a little bit about the DWC program. For your first four semesters here at PC, you will take a course in the DWC program. The, the all, all four semesters, it's two credit hours of seminar and two credit hours of lecture. And so the way that ends up working is that in the first three semesters, you'll be in a big class of about 100, 100 people twice a week for lecture. And then for two hours, one time a week, you'll be in a room where it's somewhere between 15, maybe maybe 18, that's the, that's the high end of people sitting around a, a round table, ideally when we're, we're in a, a non-COVID environment, around a round table in a small room. And I sometimes tell people, you know, uh, if you think that college should be about a big lecture hall where you have a professor uh, offering a, a carefully prepared lecture, this is that course. And also if you think, no, 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 College really is about a small group of students sitting around a table with one professor and, and some great texts. This is also that class. Uh, and we, we, so the first three semesters, it's chronologically driven. The first semester goes from kind of the beginning of time to about the year 800, the reign of Char Charlemagne. The second semester picks it up there and takes us through just shy of the French and American revolutions, 1776 and 1789. Uh, and that and that takes us to the third semester takes us from there straight up to the present. Uh, we also do engage the question of what is this thing called Western civilization? In fact, what is civilization? And is this a thing that we should be talking about? Um, or uh, what are the ways that we should talk about this better and more effectively? Uh, those all three of those semesters are team taught by by professors who come from theology, philosophy, literature, and history. We also ask those professors to engage some aspect of music and art so that you often see those, those uh, kinds of texts and, and kinds of um, works of art engaged in as well. Uh, and occasionally we'll have someone from the art and art history uh, department or, or some, some other department, political science, uh, teaching those classes as well. Um, and then our, our fourth semester is one that's much more thematic. This one we have two class, two professors who get together and you have about 32 to 34 people in, in the big group, the lecture group, and half with each professor in the smaller group. And just there, there's a whole range of, of topics for that. Really anything that any two professors can dream up. But just to talk a little bit about what I know best, I've been teaching one for uh, about seven years now called Racism and Theology of Liberation. And one of the things, since I know we're talking about fine arts, uh, or many of you are interested in the fine arts, just as an interesting connection. We have a local theater here in Providence called Trinity Rep. And Trinity, for the past several years, has been um, dealing with race and issues of diversity in their own way, moving from colorblind casting to color conscious casting and some other things. And so there's been a really good fit for us to take our students in that class. Uh, so it's a, it's a DWC core class, but I, I think Short of last semester, which involved COVID, we've been able to take students every semester uh, to, to see some play that has gone on at, um, at Trinity Rep. And in fact, our friends at Institutional Advancement were able to help us get a grant to do that kind of work better. And that's, that's the kind of work that sometimes the Center for Engaged Learning is able to do. Um, so, you know, again, the, the fine arts or that kind, of, that kind of work is not always at the very center of the DWC curriculum, but our professors are often looking for those kinds of connections to, to the arts uh, when, we, when we have those opportunities and we're able to, to create those things. Um, 
I'm sure, I, I, I tried to stay within my time and leave a little room for, for questions. Matt, I don't know if there's... You're good. You have a, a couple more minutes. Um, I have um, some of the, the next participants in the queue. So if we have some Q&A, we have some time. Otherwise, I will um, promote our, our next faculty members to panelists. Well, and let me just, uh, is there anything that, I mean, I know you're part of these conversations, even if we don't have a question from, from the audience, is there something that you think I could, I could speak to a little bit that would be helpful? Um, I think you did a really good job. Like, I, I don't know off the top of my head if there, I know that there are some colloquiums that are a little bit more specifically related to the fine arts. I don't know if you know the, the, the titles off of the top of your head. Um, but I, I always feel like those are some of the more interesting ones. Like if I if I had the colloquium as an option to me, those are the ones that I probably as, would have taken. As the fine arts major that you that you were. My, I was the my, a minor, a minor. I was minor, just, minor, I just minor. dabbled. So, so I, I know that there was one on beauty that really got at the intersection of I think theology or philosophy and beauty taught by someone who was in the arts as well as somebody who was more in, in theology. Or, or philosophy, I'm, I'm not quite remembering that. Um, but, but yeah, yeah I, I, I should have remembered that it was fine arts today and, and looked, looked up some of those, those things. But uh, like, like I said, I do think people are looking for those kinds of opportunities quite frequently. I know even in my, like not, not so much colloquium, and again, this is, it's a weird COVID time, right? But we're often looking for, oh, look, um, Here's a here's a display that's at RISD that is um, that that is oh yes Kathy Gordon yes fantastic all right so I'm half half remembering it was you <laughs> all right I'm gonna I'm gonna promote the the next group though so feel free to <laughs> to finish your thought too that's fine well so so I, yeah I was I was thinking it was Kathy but but I was gonna say we're also often looking for campus events where you know, or, or what's on display at the on-campus galleries or what's on display just off-campus at the RISD gallery or uh, some of those things, especially when our good colleagues, I'm seeing, as I'm seeing their faces, are, are reminding us, oh, right, here's, here's something that's going up, going, going up in this gallery or that ga gallery. And especially when we see the connections to those, uh, we're often trying to encourage our students to, to experience those things. Well, thank you very much, Dr. Dillon. That was very helpful. It's always nice to hear from you and good to see you. I don't see you often in this pandemic landscape, so I'm, I'm glad to see your face. Same, right back at you. And good luck, everybody, as you're, as you're making your decisions. And if there's anything I can do to, to, that you want to follow up on, uh, Matt can put you in touch with me. Fantastic. Great. Okay. Thanks a lot, Dana. Uh, so at this time, I would like to welcome uh, Dr. Heather McPherson, Dr. Kathy uh, uh, Gordon and uh, John Garrity, who are part of both our, our art, music, and, uh, um, and theater programs here on campus. So they'll be able to kind of teach or give a general overview of each program and let you know some of the, the student experiences that are happening within these programs. Um, and I think I'll turn it over to them and I'll let them do the, do the heavy lifting. Um, so we'll, uh, I think Heather, did you want to start and then we can, uh, we can, head, we can go from there. Sure. Great. Thank you, Matt. Um, hi everybody who's joining us today. Um, I'm Heather McPherson. I'm the chair of the art and art history department and, um, I'm a artist, I'm a painter and I teach painting at PC. Um, so I'm going to give you just like a five minute overview of the department. There's a lot to say, but um, hopefully just give you a kind of taste. So we are art and art history. We're a combined department. We have um, kind of the same amount of faculty on each side. And then for our majors and minors, we have our students take um, at least one to two courses on the other side of the department. So it's a very collaborative um, department. So we also Sort of our third branch is PC Galleries. We have a great director and curator, um, Jamie Lee Lacey, who runs that program. So as Dr. Dillon was just kind of alluding to, we do have a good number of um, throughout the year professional exhibitions in our two gallery spaces. Um, and those are all sort of regional, national and international artists that are coming to show at PC. 
And then for a few months each year, we have student exhibitions as well. So in the department, um, all of our students um, majors uh, would produce a thesis. So on the studio art side, that's a solo exhibition and one of the spaces I mentioned. And on the art history side, that's um, a written thesis that then we publish in our student run art journal. Um, we have, I'll, I'll put in the chat, um, links to our department uh, degree program so that you can have some, just a quick look at what is required to satisfy the major and minor. Um, but we do have lots of ways that students can be involved in the department, curricular and otherwise. So there's a major and a minor on both sides. And we also have a lot of students that work for us and with us in various ways. So the galleries are a great way to get involved, even if you're not um, necessarily taking a class that semester or deciding to minor in art or something like that. Um, we have formal internships as well as just for informal opportunities for students to help out when we have an artist in town, when we're putting up an exhibition, things like that. And then we also have students that work in our visual resource center on campus, um, helping faculty with their research. So on the studio art side, that would be something like a studio assistant. And on the art history side, that's like doing research editing, um, image formatting, things like that for publications that faculty are working on. So lots and lots of ways to be involved in the department. And we have a great really like tight knit program. Um, a lot of kind of one on one access to faculty and staff. Um, so I, I really do think the um, sort of small size of the department is a benefit um, for students coming in, you really get to know your peers and your cohort and your faculty. Um, and you get some really good access to facilities and um, private studios and um, other things to support your work. So I think I don't want to go over my time. This is just a very quick introduction. So maybe I'll leave it there for now. No, that was great. Thank you very much for that overview. Um, I don't know if John or, or Kathy would like to, I don't know who wants to go next, um, but can go. we can. Okay, fantastic. Can go. Yeah. Okay. Hello, uh, my name is Katherine Gordon and I'm the chair of the music department. I'm a musicologist, so my area of expertise is 17th century French music, though I teach all kinds of music and love to do that as well. Um, I'm also a harpsichordist, so I'm an active performer and we do have an early music ensemble here at Providence College if that interests you. Um, currently, we have three majors in music. Um, music, we have music education and musical theater major. And by the end of this fall, we should also have a major in music technology and production. Um, we also offer a music minor, and also by the end of the fall, we'll have a minor in music technology and production. We've just acquired a brand new uh, music technology lab, which has recording facilities and everything you would need to uh, be able to use and study if you get the degree in music technology and production. Um, our music major is designed to prepare you to not only have a career in music, but also to double major. So um, we've had many students who've double majored music and math, music and poli sci, music and biology, music and history, and so forth, just about every topic, I think. Um, and while most of our majors go on to have careers in music, we also have a lot of majors, especially those double majors who go on to be doctors or lawyers or professors at uh, institutions of higher education and a lot of other areas and, and do very well. Um, our music education majors, we have 100% um, placement of, for those who want to have a job right after they graduate from Providence College, they've all been able to find jobs. Though some of those have not gone on to teach but have gone on to graduate programs and then a lot of them have come actually back to teach as well. Um, we welcome students um, campus-wide 
to participate in music, um, music department activities. We have several ensembles. Um, do we have two choirs, a symphonic winds, jazz ensemble and orchestra, plus some small ensembles like the early music ensemble I, I mentioned before. Um, students can also take any class they would like and, and take lessons on any instrument they would like. Um, let's say you've never played cello and you'd love to learn how to play the cello, then, then you can uh, certainly take cello lessons. Um, and we invite everybody to be, uh, to be active in our department to whatever degree they, they would like to be. Um, we have a wonderful facility. We have a fabulous concert hall, a rehearsal hall, uh, practice rooms and, and classrooms. And as I mentioned before, the, the latest technology in music as well. So any, any questions? Excellent. Thank you, Kathy. Uh, we, there was actually a, a question um, it, that was uh, asked by one of the students. Um, okay, and Dr. McPherson took care of it already. So fantastic. <laughs> that, my job is very easy. Um, so thanks for that overview. Um, John, I saw you peek your head in a little bit. So if you're ready to go, you will. I'm here. Excellent. Awesome. Hi, everybody. My name is John Garrity. I'm uh, in a faculty member in the Department of Theater, Dance, and Film, a director. And I teach in the area of script analysis and directing. And I also teach in the uh, musical theater track, which uh, I happen to be doing uh, right now this semester. Um, theater, Dance, and Film is, as the title would suggest, a combination of three disciplines. We offer degrees in three separate performing arts areas. There's a major and a minor opportunity in theater and minors in both film and dance. And uh, a theater major would earn 38 credits at a minimum uh, to earn the, the degree. And they would, those, those courses would be rooted in fine arts courses, uh, uh, arts in, uh, in history, literature, criticism, and also the performance courses, acting, directing, design, uh, dance uh, for the theater. And uh, minors would earn 18 credits uh, and uh, in, in each of the, uh, uh, the, uh, the disciplines that they, that they chose. And uh, it's, a, it's a lighter load, but minors are effectively uh, included in all of, of the department activities uh, uh, along with the majors. Uh, very often our students are double majors. Uh, those who are uh, pursuing the theater degree. And of course, the minors have another discipline as well. So there's a, there's a cross section of a lot of, uh, of students looking at, at, at different areas of experience, academic experience. And we encourage them to try to, to funnel their other interests into the creative work uh, that they do. Our production season um, is uh, fairly busy. It's, uh, we produce three main stage uh, projects, one of which is a musical and uh, usually two are straight plays. Those are directed by faculty or guest artists. Uh, we bring in a lot of guest artists to, to work with the, uh, the, the faculty. Uh, we have uh, two dance concerts that are produced each year. There's usually a student directed, one or two student directed plays that, that, that occur as well. And a uh, film festival a career, and a creators writers festival. So that's our production season. There's a lot of opportunity. There's about 20 or so majors right now. And um, we, uh, the projects that I just described are largely populated, the theater projects are largely populated by the theater majors. They're open to anyone, but the theater majors uh, usually get first crack at, uh, at, at uh, casting in, in the projects that we're, we're producing. We consider what we do in the theater to be an extension of what we do in the classroom. So there's academic credit granted for performance in plays and, uh, and in dance concerts. And uh, it's, an, it's an extension of the classroom. We don't just separate the two. Uh, one of the things that is uh, consistent with our season selections, we try to select plays that have something to do with what's going on in the world and how that can be meaningful to this community, to the Providence College community, to the majors as, uh, at this moment in time. So the work we, we do is uh, produced thoughtfully and uh, it's, it's designed to uh, do what theater does, to examine 
how we live, how we live together, and to try to learn and grow from the stories we tell uh, on the stage. Some uh, of the special events that we have during the year, we have a thing called PC in Hollywood, where over the holiday break in the winter, we send a group of students to Hollywood to meet with uh, film professionals and uh, uh, we have some alum working in the industry that uh, sort of are, are, are the, the key uh, contacts for that. We also uh, do field trips to New York. Uh, last semester, we took a group of uh, students in the spring just before uh, we uh, had to go remote. We took a group of students to New York to see a production of Hamlet that had been brought over from Great Britain. And that was a very successful weekend. And then throughout the year, we do a lot of workshops. We bring in artists, uh, sometimes alum, uh, sometimes not, who come in and work for a, a Saturday afternoon with a group of students on a particular topic like acting for the camera or auditioning, auditioning for the musical theater because uh, several of our students are involved in the, uh, in the musical theater track. And uh, we are a, a group of seven faculty, five full-time staff people, and uh, again, an array of visiting artists. So there's a lot of professional talent to spread out over that group of 20, 25 majors uh, that we currently maintain. And uh, as others have said, it's, it's a very uh, intimate group and a lot of one-on-one -on -one attention. The classes are small and a very close relationship typically develops between uh, the students and the full-time faculty that are working in the department. And, and just I'll just finish up, a lot of our majors work in the department. There are opportunities to work in the, uh, in the, in the department, in the areas of the technical theater, the support that uh, goes into making the projects uh, that we produce. And uh, uh, again, uh, so if that is something that is of interest, that certainly would be an opportunity for, for students. It's, it's actually, in addition to providing uh, with you with some income, it's, it's, a, it's a wonderful way to learn, working with the, the staff who are employed by the department. and. Uh, and, and learning actually how to uh, do the, the behind the scenes stuff. Most of our students are interested in acting and directing, but we also, we also we do offer courses in design and, uh, and provide these opportunities for you to learn in that area because we really do believe that it, as undergraduates, you have to immerse yourself in all of it at this point in your life. Specialization uh, will likely come further down the road. Uh, so uh, I think that's it for me, Matt. Excellent. Thank you very much, John. Uh, and thank you to both Kathy and Heather as well for sharing uh, a general overview about your programs. We have a little bit of, of time. We have a couple minutes before um, our next panelists will be joining us. So if anyone has any additional um, questions, feel free to submit them in the, the, uh, in the Q&A section at the bottom. We've had a couple students that have asked questions um, and both Heather and Kathy have been very gracious to answer them. They're much better answers than I would have given. They're the actual experts, so I, I appreciate that. Um, so yeah, so again, thank you to all of our panelists. I think this was very helpful. Um, if you, if anyone, if any student would like any additional information um, about any specific major, or any specific program, I think all of your contact information is on our website and on your respective program websites. So please feel free to reach out to them um, and they can connect you with some students. Oh, go ahead, Kathy. Yeah, I was just gonna say, um, it would be, it's great to hear from the student's perspective uh, what we do in our department and, and sort of the general feeling of, of being part of our, any of our majors. So please, I, I would love it to give you information and, and how to contact one of our students or more than one of our students. As yeah, well we're, as professors too. we're wrapping up with a student panel today. So they'll get a little bit more of that firsthand knowledge. Um, but yeah, it'll be, uh, I, you know, I think uh, obviously getting in touch with current students is going to be your best resource yeah. as far as figuring out what everyday life is like on a college campus. Normally throughout this time of the year, we have students, we invite them to campus to sit in on classes and to really experience things firsthand. Obviously, in a pandemic landscape, that's not exactly as possible as we would we would hope. Um, so we're we're trying to to make sure that we can get across um, some semblance of what life is like at Providence College. So thank you again for sharing your thoughts and your insights, um, and I appreciate the the work in assisting us to build a freshman class. So thank you, thank you very much. Thanks. All right, thank you, you're very welcome. All right, our next panelist is Dr. Jennifer Van Riet. And um, as I had mentioned earlier, 
Um, Dr. Van Riet is a professor on campus that also helps coordinate our Center for Engaged Learning. Um, and so she can, uh, once I make her a co-host, there we go. Okay, so Dr. Van Riet should be able to pop up. There we go. And she'll Hi, be everybody. able to share a little bit more about what she does and her role on campus. So Jennifer, I know you're kind of pressed for time, so I will let you take it away. Oh, thank you so much. I, I am delighted to, to be here. Um, to talk to you guys today. Um, I really appreciate the opportunity and I'll try to keep um, one eye on the Q&A as well. Uh, I wanted to just build a little bit on what you what you all just heard from the wonderful fine arts faculty members that we have. Um, so as you just heard from the introduction, my name is Dr. Jennifer Van Reet. I am a faculty member in the Department of Psychology, um, but I also am the director of our Center for Engaged Learning, which is an office that is designed to help everybody on campus, um, no matter what your major is. And um, if you'll indulge me just a little bit, I did bring some slides. And so I don't want this to be too formal, but I find that the slides help me stay on track and make sure that I don't forget to share what you, with you guys what I really want to share. Um, so I promise there's only a couple slides here. I'll, I'll be brief, but I don't want to forget anything. Um, so what I want to talk to you guys about is engaged learning and um, a couple of the things that the CEL has been prioritizing recently, the Center for Engaged Learning. And I really think of engaged learning as, you know, learning that you can do inside the classroom and outside the classroom or really anywhere on campus. Um, so it's a, a mental state about how can we make sure that no matter if you're sitting you know, in a classroom listening to your professor talk or you're outside the classroom and some sort of um, engaged experience that you're, you're mentally engaged in your learning. So a few things we're doing. Um, one is we have a big emphasis on first year students. The, the transition to college can be tough. We know that and we really want to make it as smooth as possible for all of our incoming first year students. So we focus a lot of our attention on making sure that our first year students have the support they need, no matter what major they are. So a couple of the things that we do is we offer a course called Intro to PC, and it's just a one credit course. It meets once a week, but even just that one credit course and having that one check in every single week, um, make sure that you're forming a community here at Providence College, you're getting involved, um, you, there's a safety net for you. And one of the, the great things about the course is the person who teaches the course is your academic advisor. So your academic advisor gets to know you really well and you get to know your academic advisor. And that means right from day one, from your first semester, right? Your academic advisor is able to point you in the direction of opportunities that are a good fit for your goals and your interests. And it's, a, it's been a really um, successful class. Uh, we also have partnered with um, some friends on other areas of campus to offer um, training to faculty on resilience and how to boost resilience in their classes. So we have a whole host of faculty members who are teaching resilience in their class and actually focusing class time on how to build resilience. And we were, we've were we been doing this for a while now. So it was actually not something we, we started in response to the pandemic, but I'm so glad that we have been doing it for a while because now uh, students who are in these classes who have faculty members who've been specifically trained in resilience, you know, have really been able to cope with some of the effects of the pandemic well. Um, we also help support really, really engaging experiences. Now, some of those types of engaging experiences you just heard about from those wonderful faculty members. And we know that fine arts students have lots of opportunities for uh, outside the classroom engagement. Um, but, you know, we were encouraging faculty to build in more reflective practice as a way to promote engagement. Um, we're encouraging them to buy new equipment. So for example, we helped one of the studio art faculty members buy some virtual reality equipment so that she could teach this new course called Asian art through virtual reality games, which is such a popular course. Um, 
we have have helped you know some of our faculty who teach in the core curriculum which everybody takes uh, boost the engagement in those classes as well so here's just an example of uh, faculty members who teach in our development western civilization program uh, who they wanted to take all of their students to go see a play at our local theater here in providence and so we were able to make that happen and send all of their students to the play and they were connecting the content of the play very thoughtfully with what they were learning in class. Um, here's another example. We were able to send a team of students to uh, the startup challenge in 2019. Um, the, some of the Big East, Big East stuff got canceled last in 2020, last spring, of course, but the year before that, we did send a team. It was the first team that PC ever sent and so uh, they actually won third place. And this was an entrepreneurship challenge. So entrepreneurship is another area where we're really trying to build capacity. And now we know that, that all non-business majors can do what we call a business and innovation minor. And those are the students that have been participating most in some of our entrepreneurship activities. In fact, the students who went to this challenge were all uh, business and innovation minors so they were not uh, business school students number three so uh, a large part of our activities is helping coach students and advise students um, who want to to apply for postgraduate fellowships or postgraduate scholarships and so we we support uh, dozens of students every year who want to do something after pc that requires you know, a, an extensive application process, and we've been quite successful. So last year, we were named a top producer of Fulbright students, and Fulbright is a postgraduate fellowship, for those who don't know, that's affiliated with the U.S. State Department. And so what happens is after graduation, uh, Fulbright winners um, go to another country for approximately a year to engage in some sort of meaningful activity. Uh, I've to teach English or do research activities. Um, there's a number of different types of awards, but there. So last year um, we had three different students who were offered Fulbright. Um, we had one student who um, she was applying to do uh, some postgraduate work in the UK. Uh, we had one student when uh, and the, a different type of fellowship uh, called the Humanity in Action Fellowship. This was, these were our 2019 Fulbright winners and the countries where they studied. Um, and we've also done a number of different fellowships. Um, uh, I'll just put up this last one. Uh, Emma McLaughlin uh, won the Goldwater Scholarship, which is um, a prize in the STEM field. So in those process for students who are interested in those types of opportunities, we start very early. So right, we don't wait until junior, senior year to get you started on those applications. Um, we're, we're approaching you very early, your first year, your second year, to help you think about what types of opportunities are best for you and help you start preparing. And we're with you the entire way through the process. Last but not least, um, this is my last initiative I'm proud of, which is supporting original research and creative work by our students. So, you know, college is not just a place, at least college at PC is not just a place where you come and you learn stuff that, you know, your professors tell you. It's a place where you actually create your own knowledge. Um, so every year we run a big showcase of all of the wonderful creative work that our students have done over the course of the past year. We even held it last year. We did not cancel it. We just moved it online. So if you actually search Engage Learning at PC, you can, it's still up there. You can see a number of examples of really wonderful work in all disciplines. Um, but here are just some quick examples of projects that we funded. We fund projects in all the disciplines. Um, so here's a student who spent his summer uh, biking around Rhode Island, um, surveying ants. 
Um, we've sent students into other communities to conduct sort of in-depth qualitative interviews. Um, so this is a student who was working with a global studies professor, and he did some field work in New Jersey. Um, this was a film student who, she did a summer grant, and our summer grant is a 10-week grant, and it's a full-time grant. Um, where she actually got to go to France and go to the film festival and conduct some of her own research there. So again, just some other examples of other disciplines. Um, these were our winners from last summer. So we were able to keep the program and they went through digging through historical archives virtually. Um, they did uh, data collection. Um, with children and adults over Zoom. Um, they did some work in our science labs, safely, socially distant. Um, they did so much stuff and we can't wait. We'll be publicizing more and more of that in the upcoming week. So if you have any questions, please feel free to ask me now, or you can always reach me um, in my, my information's on the, on the website as well at Engaged Learning. Um, but I think overall, right, we, we want to support the type of create, creativity that our students come and we want to find out what they're interested in and what they're passionate about and make sure that, that we can help you be as, as engaged and as passionate about your education as you can be. Excellent. Thank you very much, Jennifer, for your help. Um, I, I, I'm always fascinated to see some of the, the projects that students are doing. Um, I, I feel like undergraduate research and the opportunities that our students have aren't necessarily things that are normally associated with a small liberal arts college like Providence, uh, but I feel like the fact that I think it's almost 40% of our students do undergraduate research um, on top of all the other wonderful opportunities for Fulbrights and things like that, um, I think that's a really uh, you know, undersold aspect of a school like Providence College, uh, and I'm really happy um, that for the work that you put into the center um, and allow students to have these opportunities. Thanks so much. I mean, I couldn't agree with you more. What what you find is that at, at other schools, graduate students are doing some of the work that our undergrads are doing. Right. Um, because we don't have, you know, a huge graduate student population, uh, our undergraduates are doing really advanced work and getting really advanced training and working one on one with faculty members to do cutting edge um, creative work and cutting edge science and cutting edge uh, humanities. And so it's really exciting. I, I mean, I learned so much just just reading about the students work. Excellent. Well, thank you very much for your help. Um, we have uh, uh, I, I know you need to you need to get out of here, so we'll we'll let you go. Uh, but again, Thank thanks so a lot, and um, I I will talk to you soon. So at this point, we have um, we have some current students that will be joining us. I need to make them all hosts here, uh, and so I, I as I said earlier, it's um, the best way to kind of get a sense for the student experience is to connect with current students that are on campus. Um, and, you know, we, like I said earlier, we try to get students to visit classes. Uh, that isn't really a, a reality for this year. Um, so the next best thing is to be able to talk with current students uh, and get to know a little bit more about their experiences um, inside the classroom. So we have, a, there are actually two more students that will be joining us. Um, we are a little ahead of schedule, so I, I thank you, Maggie and Liam, for, for joining us a little bit earlier. So why don't we, I'll have the two of you kind of introduce yourselves and just talk a little bit about your major um, and, and your time academically on campus, and then we'll wait for the, the other two students to join us as well. So I don't know who wants to go first. Uh, Maggie, you're in the top left for me, so I feel like you, you can go. Sure, I, I'd love to start. So my <laughs> name is Maggie Farrell. I am a studio art major. My concentration is painting. And then I minor in um, marketing and art history. And kind of when I was deciding on a major, I started out in psychology and ended up with, and I had a minor in art, but then I ended up switching that to my major and I've loved every minute of it. You know, we have such a great small community when it comes to art here. And you really just get to know every single one of your professors, every teacher that I've had. 
really like I see them on campus, they know my name. And it's really awesome having such like a tight knit close, um, you know, community within your major. So yeah. All right, so I guess I'll go next. Uh, hey everyone, my name is Liam. Uh, I'm a senior music education major. And um, uh, one thing that, uh, you know, that Mag Maggie mentioned, she switched her major. She started off as psych and I actually switched my major too. I actually started off as an accounting major my freshman year, but after a whole year of um, like, you know, studying accounting and kind of participating in like various music ensembles because I was like you know really interested in like wanting to get involved with music in college after spending time like a whole two semesters with you know music ensembles in college I decided you know I really like you know being a part of the ensembles and you know I really admired like you know what the music direct uh what the music director's job entailed so I figured that was uh that was that was something I definitely wanted to switch to I definitely wanted to switch to something to music education because that was something I had really more of a passion for Awesome. Thanks, Liam. So Catherine and Anna, uh, thanks for joining us a little bit earlier than scheduled. Uh, but we basically we're just starting off by just a quick intro um, about your major and your program. And then I'll kind of throw out some questions for students um, after that. So Catherine, uh, why don't you go ahead and, and do your intro? Sure. So hi, everyone. I'm Catherine. I'm a senior here at Providence. Um, I'm actually a management major with a studio art minor. So a little bit different, only a studio art minor. Um, came in declared management. Didn't know exactly what I wanted to do in terms of my career. I knew I was in love with the design field, but PC doesn't have a design program. So I went business management thinking that could be applicable to anything I'd want to do post college. And at the end of my sophomore year, I had a meeting with Heather McPherson, who's the head of the arts department. And she actually was the one who encouraged me to look into a studio art minor because um, the skills that you gain in that curriculum are perfectly applicable to a design career. So she was like, you know what? The proficiencies you'll get from this will be so relevant. And I think you would really enjoy it. So over the years, I've determined I want to go into the field of interior design post-college, and I now have my studio art minor with a proficiency in painting. So those skills are going to be really helpful to apply to my design career in terms of understanding relationships of color um, and all those certain things that you need for that career. So that's kind of how I got into the studio art program and Heather McPherson was the one who kind of directed me to do so and it has been awesome so that's where I'm at and I've loved every moment of it so far. Awesome thanks Catherine we actually heard from Heather a little bit earlier on today so I agree she's she's a great resource for students on campus. All right last but not least Anna can you uh, give your intro? Hi everyone my name is Anna Sabo I am a senior here at PC I'm an elementary and special education major. Um, so one thing great about our department is that it's two certifications in one degree. So basically it's like a double major, but it's not. And you also graduate with that special ed piece if you were looking for just general ed, which you really need um, or vice versa. And I am a dance minor as well. Um, I always kind of knew I wanted to be a teacher as the time has gone gone on. I've definitely leaned more towards administration. Um, so I definitely see myself. I definitely want to get my master's in administration and work as a principal and work towards policy change and things like that. Um, but of course, I need to be a teacher first. Uh, PC is giving me a great background for that. I get to be in the, you get to start your field work very, very early, which is awesome. And another great thing is you get to go abroad. Um, for a lot of people who are looking into teaching, you can't necessarily go abroad. Um, I was able to go to Florence, and we also had the choice of Belfast. Um, as a dance minor, I'm also part of PC Dance Company, and basically the only thing I have left is my crew credit. Um, so we'll see how we get that done this year. Um, but other than that, Great, fantastic. Okay, so knowing that all of the uh, students that are attending this are interested in getting involved with the fine arts, whether it be as a major or maybe as a minor or just as something that they would like to continue with when they get to campus. Um, can you talk about, I think, I, I think it's helpful for students to know, um, can you talk about your favorite class that relates to the fine arts? I feel like it's easy, you know, it's, it's it can be difficult sometimes for students to envision continuing with fine arts in an academic setting. 
So I feel like just talking about your favorite class as it relates to the arts um, is a really good way to kind of showcase that experience on campus. Um, so I, I don't know who wants to go first. Uh, there's there's not like a good order for this. So uh, Maggie, can I call on you first? Just because you're again on the you're in the top left. That's my bias to go to the top left of the screen. So yes, of course. So I have so I've taken a, a good amount of art classes. I think I'm on like my seventh now. Um, so like I said earlier, I have a concentration in painting. And I actually took this class with Catherine and my favorite class is probably my painting class. Um, and it was just really cool. Like you go into college, you know, loving art and having this passion for it and, you know, doing it, you know, one way or another throughout life. And then you get here and then they're showing you like a whole new world with all new materials. You have crazy amount of materials you never even like dreamt of using and, you know, just learning of like different, I mean, I feel a lot of art classes are very collaborative. You're always talking with the person who's, you know, um, stand is next to you and asking like, wow, how'd you make that look like that? And everyone's kind of just sharing like what they see in their art and what they see in yours. And you kind of just really get a great grasp for everyone's perception of art. So I think painting was probably my favorite because I think I learned the most. And I, again, like Catherine said, um, Heather is absolutely fabulous and just so patient and she she's so ready to hear like whatever creative ideas you have. So I'd probably go painting, but I really, really did love art history, which was a total shock to me because I had never studied any art history before. So those are probably my top two. Awesome. Go ahead, Catherine. I'll chime in just to piggyback off of Maggie because painting one, um, is definitely, I, I have two favorite courses I've taken so far within my minor, and that would be one of them. Um, one thing that I really enjoyed was that while it was a painting fundamentals course, it wasn't always geared directly to painting. We had sketchbook work as homework outside, so we got to work with, you know, just classic paper and pencil, or we would do things in Photoshop and manipulate images and use them as sources for painting. So we really worked across a ton of different medium so you're learning more than just painting in an intro to painting class which I thought was really nice so you picked up so many other skills along the way and another class I really liked um, is the art history course that you have to take with your minor that's like the only non-studio class that you have to do for the minor I'm not sure for the major but I know at least for the minor um, and at the time when I was taking art history, I was also in the development of Western Civ program. I was still finishing that up. Um, and I found that there was a lot of crossover between what I was learning in Civ, the time period kind of lined up to what I was studying in art history. So that was really nice to have that crossover. And it made the idea of a fine arts kind of fit in with the curriculum of what else I was learning at PC. So it was really nicely integrated. It just kind of happened in like the time I ended up taking it. But it's nice because you could learn things in both Civ and Art History that you could apply to both. Um, and I felt that was really helpful and just fun to see that crossover. Great. Liam, can you go next? Yeah, sure. So um, I've taken like, you know, many, many like courses within the music department and you know, they range from like, you know, theory, music history and literature, um, theory lab, which is kind of like, you know, an ear training, oral skills kind of uh, way to um, kind of class that's like, you know, geared towards like music theory and all that. But so that may, you know, kind of sound like a little dull, but other classes that I've had to take are piano class and voice class. So I forgot to mention, you know, in my intro, my I'm a music education major and my concentration is trumpet so that trumpet's my primary instrument but some like you know the qu classes like you know that i've really enjoyed have been like learning the different instruments like you know piano and voice class and those classes are mainly composed like of a lot of like you know like majors minors non non-majors or minors that are like looking to get their fine arts that are looking to get yeah, their fine arts credits like out of the way and you know, like, you know, being a part of those classes, you know, has been like, you know, really fun. And it's like really helped me like, you know, get to know more of the, like, you know, the piano and the voice and, and, you know, just all those 
all those backgrounds because you know before before college like I never really was like you know a piano player or like a vocalist for that matter and just like taking those classes now have just been like you know helped me better like as a musician and just like it's it's really helped me like in uh like you know my perspective of like music a lot more and like not to mention there are a few other classes where I've had to take like where I've had to learn different instruments from the different families so one of my classes was devoted to learning how to teach brass and like learn how to play brass instruments another one was teaching and learning how to play woodwinds from like the woodwind family like the flute and the clarinet and now I'm in my uh teaching str like strings class where I'm learning like you know violin viola and cello and all that kind of stuff so I know that you know that's a lot of, like you know of instruments I'm naming off right now but throughout like you know the course of like all my classes that I've had to take They've definitely been from, you know, when I've like gotten to perform and all that. And that's what's really kept me, you know, entertained through the rest of my other classes that I've had. Awesome. Thanks, Liam. All right, and what are what are some of the dance classes like? Or like, you know, what has been your favorite dance class? I'm sure those are those are pretty interesting sometimes. Yeah, so you know, for the dancers who are on the Zoom, you spend hours and hours growing up because it kind of you have to make a choice at a certain point. Um, if you're going to keep continuing, you know, you can't really do both. You can't play sports and do it. Um, so for me, when I was coming to school, like a, a good dance program was super important. Um, I trained pretty professionally for super long and then realized I had a passion for teaching. So it kind of worked together. I definitely say one of the top classes I take that brought my two passions together was teaching children's dance. Um, so that was super cool. And we actually got to go and teach dance at a charter school. Um, but like as a curriculum in their school, which I absolutely loved. But then you also have like, I take jazz class, and, but it also fulfilled my writing too. And I think the best part about that was a lot of dancers grow up learning a very Eurocentric um, form of jazz dance. And it actually does not come from Europe. Um, it, it comes from Africa. And I actually learned that. And I was also retraining some of my old habits which made me a better dancer and a better jazz dancer as a whole um so not only in that class was i like writing and learning and fulfilling my writing to requirement but i have never felt so strong after that class with cat nasty um she teaches a lot of our classes she's super intimidating at first she's like five foot she like runs around the studio and like you're like dying by the end of her warm up, but it's one of those teachers that you just feel so good with if you just keep going. Um, you're also, uh, our dance company is a little bit different, but if you are a dance minor, most of us are on dance company, which I can also talk about later. Awesome, great. So I still, I have a couple more questions to ask the panelists as well, but for you students that are attending, feel free to ask some students the questions through using the Q&A. I feel like that's a, a useful tactic as well. Um, and we'll answer those as we, as we continue on. Um, but I think one of the things that uh, prospective students are often asking me when I'm on the road is that they they don't, they know that they want to continue with the arts at, at a college. They're not always quite sure that they want to major in the arts. So I, I guess, can anyone speak to like maybe uh, the, an academic journey where you arrive to campus and you weren't quite sure of the majoring or minoring in something, but you know, you, you, after speaking with some professors, maybe you were kind of reassured that this was like a viable option where you could actually like have a job and have a career after PC. Uh, Cause I feel like that's something that a lot of prospective students are worried about when I'm meeting them on the road. Yeah, go ahead, Maggie. So I actually think I'm a great um, person to talk to about this. Cause I ended up changing my major three times. So okay. I came in psychology with a minor in art. And I just knew I loved art. Uh, it's something that has always kind of, you know, relaxed me. I've always enjoyed doing it. So I knew I just like wanted to throw that in there just for fun, maybe do art therapy or whatnot. So then as I took more and more classes and talked with all the professors, I kind of got to know that, you know, that really was my passion. And kind of what my parents always told me was like, follow your passion, that's gonna take you where you wanna go. 
so I was like, okay, okay. So I talked to a few, um, you know, my art advisor and she was like, okay, let's do this. I get to school and I kind of had a panic attack. Like, I don't know like what I'm going to do with art. So let me just jump into teaching. Maybe I could be an art teacher or something. Switched my major again to teaching, came back again, ended up, didn't, didn't, wasn't for me. So went back to art and now I have been realizing that I really love the art of design and what, what is so interesting about that to me is like fashion or different, just like uh, package design, whatever it is has to do with design. That's what I love. And I've recently been talking to people from uh, actually Tommy Hilfiger for for a um, potential internship this summer. So my advice to, you know, having that passion for art and wanting to carry it over, follow it. If it's something you love, eventually you'll get paid for it and just keep doing what you love, keep creating and, you know, you'll get good results. So that's kind of my story with not knowing what I want to do and it all, you know, landing into place and it does work out. So don't stress. You can change your major a few times if you want and it all works out. Awesome. Great. So I think one of the highlights of being a student at Providence College is the access to different internships, right? I mean, the fact that we're so close to downtown um, means that it's just really ac easy access for students. But can someone talk about, I guess, uh, either an internship or like an experience outside of the classroom that really relates to their major? Yeah, go ahead. I, I knew you were going to ask or you were going to raise your hand, Liam, because I know the music ed major definitely incorporates a lot of that. But yeah, look, uh, I want to hear what you have to say. So, yeah, I mean, I didn't really have like, you know, a so-called internship. Like it was more of my practicum and like my field experience. So like, you know, each like, you know, my junior year and my like fall. So like last year, last fall, my junior year, like I guess you could say my internship was going out into a school and like learning, practicing how to teach. So it was like, you know, a prep for like student teaching that I have next semester. So, I mean, and it was only like, you know, once a week and it's part of like, you know, a class that happens at PC. So I think when most people think of internships, they think of just like, you know, eight hours a day sitting at a, like, you know, a desk or something like that, working for like a company and not really like thinking about education or whatnot, just thinking about business. I, you know, internship like you know to me is more about like you know getting experience and for that like that was my experience like that was my internship it was just like practicing before I you know do my student teaching or just like graduating getting my degree and going out into the real world and like actually teaching actually being a teacher in like my first school or something like that so I mean there's always like you know a form of an internship in any you know really any capacity and for you like music education for me or any education field for that matter it's just going out into a school and just practicing, standing up in front of a class and teaching. Awesome. Great. Go ahead, Anna. Um, oh, was that a... No, no, no. I can add to this. Okay, uh, cool. Yeah. So obviously my major is education, but within the dance minor, um, there are many opportunities for quote unquote internships. We have um, children's dance on Saturday mornings. So you are all of the minors get priority and it's actually a paid job to teach that. Um, you take children's dance, that's another way you get experience. And then for me, I've actually been able to bring my minor into my major, kind of flip it around. Um, and at schools, unfortunately this semester, it didn't work out, but we had a plan for me to, at my student teaching placement in Central Falls to do like an extracurricular with dance afterwards. Um, so, and my education department was like pushing for it. So the departments work together. Um, you have to be creative sometimes because, you know, they won't always think of it, but if you do it and you ask and you advocate for yourself, PC is more than happy to make it work. Awesome. Great. So I think kind of piggybacking off of the internship experiences, you know, a, a big focus that I think more and more students are taking advantage of, at least in recent years, is this availability to be able to incorporate a study abroad experience into their four years. And obviously, you know, with this year being a global pandemic, that's a little bit more challenging. Uh, but I guess, have either of you or any of you studied abroad? And can you talk about like how that relates to 
your major or your involvement within the fine arts on campus? Go ahead, Anna. Yeah, so I was actually nervous about this. Um, so I went abroad and as an education major, you already take extra classes. And I was like, oh my gosh, how am I gonna fit in my dance class to finish my minor? Um, and you have to take a modern class before you graduate. And I hadn't taken it. And I knew I wasn't gonna be able to take any classes this year due to my student teaching schedule. So I did some digging and I took a modern class and it was super cool. I like was able to go back to the basics and kind of like really just like find my body again, you know, and like work on my technique, which was very nice. And then also we got to go see professional dancers in Italy and see how they're modern and their training and where they're at in their life. Um, so that was super awesome being able to do that. And then seeing also like young girls and, and guys like dancing um, in a different country. Very cool. Uh, Catherine, do you, is that your hand or are you just waving? Oh no, sorry. That was me just with my hand. Like oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, I didn't get the opportunity to study abroad just since my minor was added so late. I was yep. worried that I wouldn't be able to fit all my studios in in time. It definitely would have been possible for me. But just me with just extenuating stressors, just wanted to make sure it was done all the time. But I was actually, I was looking into the program in Copenhagen, Denmark. Um, and with me, with hopes of going into the interior design field, um, Scandinavia is known for its interior design. And so something that I did look into that would have been a really cool opportunity is that I could have completed classes for my minor that are in the interior design program in Copenhagen. So even though I'm in a business major here, I didn't have to go into the management program of Copenhagen. I could have done the design program in Copenhagen and fulfilled classes for my minor. So that was a really cool overlap um, and something that almost related directly to what I wanted to go into. Um, so there definitely are really fun and exciting opportunities out there for studio art majors and minors, especially when it comes to studying abroad. Yeah, there there isn't a major on campus that would ever prevent someone from studying abroad. You know, as Anna mentioned, even even as education majors are taking kind of an accelerated, and this is the same for Liam too with music ed, how it's kind of an accelerated timetable. Um, but there are a lot of different ways to incorporate study abroad into your four years. It doesn't have to be just during the academic year. I mean, that's still the most popular way that students will study abroad. But we also have students doing a, an abroad experience over the summer or over Christmas break or spring break or something called a Maymester that happens usually immediately after the, the academic year ends. So there are just a lot of different ways for students to have that experience throughout their four years, which I think is pretty cool. Liam, sorry, did I interrupt you earlier? Well, no, I was just gonna like uh, build off on what you said, saying like, there's no, like, there, the, like, you know, I switched my major to music education and they, you know, told me that you still can go abroad. And like, you know, I was interested in it, but at that point I was like still trying to catch up on all my course requirements and uh, things I needed to, to do. And like Matt said, like, there's never, there's not going to be a program like anywhere at PC where they won't deny you to like, you know, not go abroad. They'll definitely like encourage it. But for me, I think, you know, you know, it was, it was also kind of limited for music education too, but at the same time, it probably came along with, you know, the fact that I switched my major and all that, that I was just trying to focus on catch, catching up on everything. And, you know, I think, you know, if I, you know, like looked into it a little bit more, I probably would have, you know, like, you know, ended up following through by like, you know, applying to go abroad. But at the, at the same time, like, you know, regardless if you go abroad or not, like your experience, like my experience has been amazing. And I, you know, didn't, I didn't go abroad because I just had so many other oppor opportunities to like, you know, here at PC, like get involved, do some, you know, practice student teaching and all that. It ended up working out like great. Okay, so our students have been very, um, they've been on for almost an hour. So I think I have one more question to kind of wrap things up for them. Um, and then we can kind of get everyone on their way unless other questions come through on the chat. But I think a, a good way to end this is if you could just talk about 
I guess, what is your favorite part about being a student at Providence College? Doesn't have to necessarily relate to your major or your involvement within the fine arts, but I feel like, you know, being able to get a sense for why you enjoy PC is usually pretty helpful. I can start us off. Um, so I do this all the time. I give tours on campus, but my baby, my biggest thing about PC is that it is a small school with a large school feel. We are the biggest, we are the littlest big school in the nation, is what I like to say. Um, so you can sit in class with twenty five people, and then you can go to the Dunkin' Donuts Center and see Nate Watson, who's one of my good friends. He's on the basketball team. He sat next to me in theology. I met him, and then I'd go and watch him play. Um, I think that is such a, a cool aspect because I definitely wanted that big school feel but could not handle it class-wise. And my other big takeaway is that you see Friar family everywhere. It's 100% true. Um, I had a rough first semester. I was very sick. Um, and basically, long story short, the girls on dance actually would like make me dinner without telling me or like invite me over and, and took care of me. And I know no matter where I was on campus, those older, um, my older peers would have done the same. So definitely our big school feeling in a small school setting and the way that um, we take care of one another. You can go next. Sorry, Liam, do you wanna go? No, nah, you can go, Meg. You okay. Call, you call it. <laughs> I, I have to agree with her, uh, with Anna, with, you know, that Friar family feeling like something I was looking for in school was just some, some place you hear it again and again, some, somewhere that feels like home. And this really does, I really have yet to mean, meet a mean peer person here. Everyone is so nice. Everyone's so welcoming. You know, you, you recognize someone from class, you say hi when you see them, like, you don't need to know them. Everyone's just so nice. And it's it's a comfortable place to be. You you don't really feel like the world's against you here. Everyone's rooting for you from your professors to your friends to, you know, the friars or whatnot, but everyone is just so inviting here and welcoming and it just feels like home to me. So that's why PC for me. Yeah, so um, for me, you know, I've really, yeah, no, one thing that really drew me to PC was just the, well, like, the student body, the student leaders, and just of how welcoming, like, they were, both, like, when I was, you know, you know, both being as a prospective student and now, too, because everywhere I go, like, I always see someone, like, who's there to be there for me, you know, I remember, like, you know, I know I keep mentioning this, but like, you know, when I was a freshman, I was an accounting major and there are so many different, so many like people accounting, so many accounting majors or business majors for that matter on campus. And then I switched over to music education and there's only, there was only like a, like only a few other, you know, music majors like in my class. And, you know, at that point, you know, I was kind of like, you know, feeling a little lonely at first, but, you know, and then it, well, and then, it, like, you know, I felt lonely, and then it kind of felt like freshman year all over again. But I waited, like, you know, a few weeks, you know, to get into the routine. And then then I became, like, you know, oh, wait, there are still, like, people here for me. I'm not, like, I'm not, I'm not like, you know, uh, staying, like, you know, switching to another major, like, by myself. I didn't leave everyone. Everyone's still here for me. You know, like, I still, like, kept in contact with the people that I was, you know, that were in my accounting classes and all that. And, you know, I told them about my switching major and they were like, oh, that's so cool, man. And it was just, they were all just, everyone here is just so friendly and welcoming. And I've just, I've cherished that like ever since being a student here. I think I'll probably be mentioning a lot of the same things that everyone else has, but I think I definitely chose PC for its overall culture. Um, I find something that's really unique about PC is the willingness of, and everyone wanting you to succeed, whether it's fellow students, faculty, or alumni. Um, I think ever since I've come to PC, I feel like they've really wanted to see me flourish along with every other student here um, and every member of the Providence community. 
And like everyone's been saying, people are so willing to help you here, um, professors and students, and they just really want to see you feel like you belong and that you are set up for a set up for success after you leave Providence after your four years. Um, I remember when I first went on my tour here, I found that it was so unique that I was lucky enough to come during the school year. So I was taking a tour in between students walking between their classes in the afternoon. And just by looking around, you would see students walking with small, large groups of their friends, laughing, just having a good, good time in those five minutes, you know, it takes to walk from one class to the next. And in comparison to so many schools that I visited, it just didn't seem to be the case. It was something really unique about here. No one seemed unhappy or overwhelmed. Everyone just seemed, no matter how their day was going, they genuinely, genuinely just seemed happy to be at Providence. Um, and just, seemed really secure here, um, which I found was really unique and different. So there is a culture here that kind of speaks for itself and that's shown in all of our responses. Um, but yeah, so that's definitely why I, just the general feel of the school is why I chose it. Awesome. Well, thank you very much to all of our student panelists to kind of help shed some light on the current student experience at Providence College. Uh, and thank you for attending as prospective students as well. Hopefully throughout the course of this hour plus you've, you've learned a little bit more about what it's like to be a student generally at PC and also a little bit more about specifically the, the fine arts and those programs that are available to all students on our campus. Um, so I don't see any other questions in the chat and that's okay. So I, I think uh, without further ado, we'll, we'll wrap things up for tonight. Um, we are um, recording this, so you can always go back and if you miss something, you can go, we'll post it on our website. You can go back and check something out. And um, all of the contact info for at least the professors that we've talked to is right on our website. So if you need to reach out or if you'd like to reach out to one of those professors, um, or get some more information about a specific program, you can reach out directly to them or to any one of us in the admission office, and we can very easily connect you to different people on campus. So thanks again. Um, enjoy the rest of your Tuesday evening, and I, I wish you the best, and uh, thanks, and go Friars. <laughs>